Okay, this is a video to explain the answers to quiz 1.1 to 1.4. Midpoint formula is x plus x over 2, and then y plus y over 2. So when you plug these in there, you have 8 plus a negative 4 divided by 2, negative 1 plus 3 divided by 2, and working those out gives you the point 2, 1. Finding the distance, distance formula is square root of x minus x squared, plus y minus y quantity squared. When you plug those values in, you get the square root of 8 minus negative 4 squared plus negative 1 minus 3 squared, which gives you 12 squared here and negative 4 squared there, and gives you 144 plus 16, which is the square root of 160. That's approximately 12.65. Looking at this uh, number two, we're looking at the domain. Domain are your x numbers. So here, this, this point here has an x of negative two. Right here has an x of negative one. And you notice that the graph will keep going, going, going to zero and to one and to negative three and negative four and real, any number in between those, those, whole, those integers as well. Um, so our domain is going to be all real numbers, or another way to write that is it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, now the range are your y values. So your y for this point has a y of 1. Okay, so we have a y of 1 here. And we don't have any more y values that are below 1, but we do have y values that are above 1. So, for example, this point right here has a y of 2. Up here, we would have a point up here that would have a y of 3. We have y um, around right here is 1.5. Okay, So we have all these values from 1 all going up through infinity. So we would say either x such that x is greater than or equal to 1, or you could also write it as 1 is included all the way through infinity. And yes, it is a function. Each x only corresponds to one y. We can use the vertical line tests. So yes, it is a function. And f of negative 1, right here at negative 1, if I have an input of negative 1, my output is a 2. So f of negative 1 is 2. Okay. Number 3, g of negative 5. That means you take that negative 5 and plug it in. So you have negative 5 to the third minus 2 times negative 5 plus 3, which comes out to be negative 125 plus 10 plus 3, which is negative 112. Okay, that's number 3. Number 4. You want to sketch this graph. To sketch this graph, this is your y-intercept. So a negative 4 is your y-intercept, where it's crossing your y. And your slope is 2 over 1. So from your y-intercept, it rises 2, runs 1, rises 2, runs 1. Okay, and you have a sketch of your graph there. Your x-intercept, you can find this two different ways. One, you can look at the graph that you just have here. And the x-intercept is at 2, 0 right there. The other way to do it, to find your x-intercept, you have to set your y equal to 0. So in your equation, you put a 0 in here, and you solve that. You add your 4 over and divide by your 2, you get x of 2. So you have your x-intercept as that 2, 0. Your y-intercept, we can find that from the equation right there, or look at it on the graph, that point right there, or to algebraically. When you find your y-intercept, you always set your x equal to 0. So we set y is equal to 2 times 0 minus 4. 2 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So our y-intercept is at 0, negative 4. The 0, also known as our root, or our solution, or our x-intercept, okay? It's always where it crosses your x here. So it's at x equals 2, is our 0. Number 5. Okay, so you don't have to do this part, but if you get a visual for it, it has a point of 1, 3, it's going to go through that point. It's going to have a slope of 2 fifths, so it would go up 2, 
and over 5, our graph would look, you know, something like that. We want the equation of that. So point slope form is point slope form is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So if I plug these in here, I would have y minus the 3 is equal to m times x minus our x. And right there is our point slope form. You're done. Whoop. Let's move this over so you can see it. So there is your point slope form. To get it in slope intercept form, that's the y equals mx plus b form, we have to solve this out to get y by itself. So you can distribute that through. Okay. And then to get y by itself here, we're going to add 3 to both sides of the equation. So we have y is equal to 2 fifths x. And let's see, um, it's what? This would be 3 would be 15 fifths. So 15 minus 2 would be 13 fifths there. I'm okay if you also put 2.6. That'd be fine as well. Okay, standard form has your x's and y's on the same side. Okay, and a, b, and c cannot be fractions. We want them all to be integers. So the first thing I would do here is I would multiply to get rid of the fraction. So you got 5y is equal to 2x plus 13. You can multiply everything by 5. And then you get x by itself. You can bring that, subtract that 2x over. Negative 2x plus 5y equals 13. Or if you multiply everything by negative 1, you'd have 2x minus 5y equals negative 13, which is the same thing. So you have your three different forms. Okay, number six, we know it's going to be parallel to this. So if we know it's going to be parallel, that means it has to have the same slope, which means we've got to find the slope of this one. So to find slope, I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract the 3x over. And I'm going to divide by negative 2. So negative 3 divided by negative 2 is 3 over 2x. And it doesn't, this part doesn't really matter, but if we do that, we would get negative 5 halves there. But we know our slope is 3 over 2. And if it has to be parallel to this line, I know my other line has to have a slope of 3 over 2 as well. And my other line here goes through the point negative 1, 3. If you get a visual of what we're doing here, this line here starts at negative 2 and a half. It goes up 3 and over 2, so we have a line something like this. We have this other point here, this other line that we're trying to find, goes through negative 1, 3, and is parallel to this, so it's going to have the same slope just over here. So you could either, I do say slope-intercept form, so you can put it in point-slope form and then change it to slope-intercept like we did, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to have y minus 3 is equal to 3 over 2 x minus negative 1 which basically turns out to be plus 1. So I distribute that through. y minus 3 is equal to 3 over 2x plus 3 over 2. And lastly, to get y by itself, I add 3 to that side. So I'd be left with y is equal to 3 over 2x plus 9 halves. 9 halves is the same as 4.5. I'm fine if you have a decimal there as well. Okay, number seven. Question number seven. Um, I've typed in all of the years and the number in the household here to get our equation. We're, gonna, we're saying that it's linear. So we're going to have to type in y1 okay, mx1 plus b. And notice it gives us our m here and our b. So we have our equation here. Okay, now you can run it different ways. I said y is equal to negative point zero. 19x plus 39.66. Okay. And then for part B, if we want to make a prediction for the year 2020, I'm going to take that equation and I'm going to plug it in. So if you run that slope a little differently, you might get a little different answer. But basically, um, if you use what I had, I have negative 0 0.019 times 2020 plus 39.66. And it gives you one, 1.28. So your part B could look a little different depending on how you round your slope, but there, that's one of your potential answers. Okay, part C asks us to find the correlation coefficient, and what does it tell you? Correlation coefficient is this R value here. Remember, if it's really close to one or really close to negative one, 
that it is a pretty close, tight correlation. And if it's close to zero, then it'd be really scattered. So if you notice, all these points that we have right here are, are fairly close to this blue line. So it's a pretty tight correlation, 0.97 or negative 0.97 is pretty, pretty tight. And the negative just means that we have a negative correlation, a negative slope with it. Okay.